third and fourth generation TKIs, and it's really quite amazing to even talk about this because seven years ago, we knew nothing about ALK in inhibition. In this uh, era, we now have three uh, FDA-approved drugs, trazotinib, you know, second-line drugs, seritinib, and electinib, uh, brigatinib, uh, most likely approved as of uh, May or June of uh, 2017. Uh, on the horizon, perhaps on the immediate horizon, is lorlatinib. Uh, and the original studies of lorlatinib in phase one and phase two, unlike many of the other uh, TKIs, allowed multiple prior TKIs. So lorlatinib is distinguished, uh, at least the early data, by the fact that it was much more inclusive, that it evaluated uh, uh, this agent in folks who were truly TKI refractory and continued to uh, cite responses. Uh, as you'd imagine, heavily pretreated individuals had lower response rates, but we were still seeing responses. And there are now ongoing trials looking at lorlatinib specifically in CNS-only uh, disease progression. And again, anecdotal reports of uh, patients with refractory brain metastasis, and for that matter, leptomeningeal disease that's actually responding uh, to lorlatinib. So amongst many of the new agents that are being investigated, I am uh, re quite optimistic about this agent, whether it's going to actually displace the other agents or be complementary uh, to the first, second, and third generation uh, agents remains to be seen. Uh, another area of uh, research, of course, is combining uh, TKIs with other small molecules or angiogenesis inhibitors. Um, far less sanguine about uh, checkpoint blockade plus uh, ALK inhibitors, but I am reasonably optimistic about the potential for angiogenesis inhibitors such as bevacizumab or ramucirumab combined with uh, some of the standard TKIs. And I think in individuals who have multiple mechanisms of resistance, let's just say hypothetically ALK and BRAF, which is conceivable, we will start seeing unusual oral drug combinations that will really address all the uh, major pathways that are driving the, the growth of the tumor. This is going to require uh, a lot of flexibility and a lot of ingenuity on the uh, part of the uh, thoracic oncologist. So stay tuned, it's going to be an exciting field. Just as an example, I have an individual who uh, uh, as an ALK uh, rearrangement, originally responded to crizotinib, actually developed CNS progression, um, slow but uh, clear cut. We had switched him to uh, seritinib at that point, continued to do quite well, although uh, the GI toxicity was uh, a bit of a challenge. We managed to conquer that. More recently, this individual has developed uh, isolated uh, liver progression. We biopsied the uh, liver. And lo and behold, there was a BRAF mutation. Low percentage, but clearly present. ALK translocation was still present. So how do I manage this individual? Isolated progression, I can uh, potentially treat with chemoembolization or RFA and continue the original lectinib. I could do that and at least consider agents that would uh, potentially target BRAF. Uh, this may be a one-off, it may be unique. Uh, but I uh, foresee uh, the development of unique uh, pathways of uh, resistance that we had not previously uh, identified, and it's going to require a lot of adaptability in terms of uh, managing these individuals. Um, both lorlatinib and entrictinib are uh, another set of next-generation ALK inhibitors. We have a little more data with lorlatinib, and it appears to have shown activity in patients who have not only progressed after crizotinib, but also have received uh, one of the next generation ALK inhibitors, such as electinib and seritinib, and the drug does have activity uh, in those patients. And in fact, uh, a breakthrough designation has been given by the FDA for this drug. And tritinib is another ALK inhibitor it is also being tested in patients who have uh, previously been treated with prizotinib, but it, uh, in addition, it is also being tested in frontline setting. We have a lot less data of its use in patients who have received prizotinib and then received another next generation ALK inhibitors. Uh, I believe at the present time, the expected sequence, so uh, one can 
uh, talk about sequence of ALK inhibitors in two different sort of time <laughs> periods. At the present time, we are still using crizotinib as frontline therapy, and then subsequently using one of the next generation ALK inhibitors. And my suspicion is in those patients, uh, we may choose to use lorlatinib as another third ALK inhibitor, whereas right now, we are moving on to chemotherapy uh, in those patients. But as I mentioned, in the future, in the very near future, we are going to be moving these next generation ALK inhibitors, one of which seritinib is already approved, and I expect that electinib will also be approved. And I suspect that in patients who progress on uh, those drugs, uh, we are likely to choose another ALK inhibitor, such as loratinib, which already has demonstrated some act activity, limited data set, only about 45 patients. Uh, doc, uh, presented at last year's ASCO, and there's going to be some more data uh, at this year's ASCO on lorlatinib's activity in patients who have progressed after uh, next generation ALK inhibitors. I think this is where mutation testing might start playing a role in that patients who progress on next generation ALK inhibitors may be tested, um, uh, may, their tumors may be molecularly profiled, and in patients who have ALK mutations or ALK amplifications are the ones who may be treated with a drug like lorlatinib, whereas patients who don't have ALK-dependent mechanism of resistance may be much more likely to be treated by other drugs such as cytotoxic chemotherapy. So if I had to summarize the expected sequence, I think either seritinib or electinib is likely to be approved as frontline therapy, and once lorlatinib gets approved, if it does get approved by the FDA, that would be a preferred choice as the next uh, treatment for patients who've progressed on these drugs if an ALK-dependent mechanism of resistance is identified in the tumor. And if ALK-dependent mechanism is not identified, those patients may be treated with uh, chemotherapy. So the question is uh, the role of uh, entractinib. Um, it is again uh, probably number six if you go with the historic uh, sequence of drug development uh, in uh, our list of ALK inhibitors, and uh, it is active, it has a role, uh, but the data are more limited than the other drugs. So I, I think it will have a role. Uh, what role and where it fits will be determined by multiple uh, factors. There's actually um, an NCI trial looking at the sequence in, of ALK agents, but the design is uh, complicated enough uh, that it's still not open. And I think by the time it is open and gets accrued, because these patients are not very common in our clinical practice, um, we probably will have found um, newer ways of treating ALK patients with combinations of these agents with other agents that are currently in testing. So I don't have high hopes that one day we'll be crystal clear about what the optimal sequence is. I think it'll vary uh, by patients, it'll vary by availability of drugs, it'll vary by what else we have already combined and shown incremental efficacy with. So the jury will remain out. Uh, 